Hello and welcome to episode 18 of Video Game Easter Eggs, the series where we take a look at some of the latest and not so latest Easter eggs in video games, with the only rule being they cannot have featured on my channel before. In today's video, we take a trip to the sewers in The Crew 2, we find a singing farmer in Blood and Bacon, and we discover an animal shelter in The Division 2. As always, if you think you know of an Easter egg that I'm yet to cover, then the best place to let me know is in the comments section or on my social media accounts, the links to which are in the description description. Oh, and if you are enjoying this series, then a like is really appreciated. Anyway, without further delay, let's get started. So first up, let's take a look at Ori and the Blind Forest, the platform adventure game developed by Moon Studios. By the time you watch this video, the sequel to the Blind Forest, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, will have released, and if it's anything like the first game, they're in for a real treat. Having never covered Ori and the Blind Forest on this channel before, I thought now would be a good time to take a look at what this game has to offer. First up, in the Forlorn Ruins, you can find this. So just about visible in the foreground is Meat Boy from Super Meat Boy. The next discovery can be found in the Formfelt Swamp. So this is of course the Triforce from the Legend of Zelda series. The final easter egg I've managed to find once again references Nintendo and can be found in the Sunken Glades. So this pipe is almost certainly a reference to the warp pipes found in the Super Mario series. So this next easter egg was all over the internet last week and it was all thanks to one man. Lance McDonald, whose YouTube channel can be found in the description and who was also kind enough to send me the original recording so be sure to check him out, managed to take control of the camera in 2018's God of War to capture this. So this never before seen discovery shows Baldir sticking his middle finger up after Kratos tossed him off a cliff at the beginning of the game. This sort of thing does make me wonder what else we might have missed over the years. Right, so it's time to cover even more easter eggs found in Zombie Army 4 Dead War. Considering this is a game that I didn't expect to keep me playing for more than a week, it's currently my go to game when I just want to shoot some zombies. In past episodes of this series we've covered loads of easter eggs from Dead War including a spooky painting. and a nod to Shaun of the Dead being some of the highlights. Well, this next easter egg also references Shaun of the Dead too. On the Shadows of Venice level, you can find this. So this zombie seems to have been disposed of using vinyl records. This is almost certainly a reference to this scene from Shaun of the Dead where Shaun and Ed throw vinyls at zombies. This next easter egg also references a film and this time it's one that gets referenced a lot. Once again on the Shadows of Venice level you can find this. So these two dolls are a reference to this scene from The Shining. Of course, this isn't the first time we've seen this particular scene referenced in video games with both Layers of Fear 2 and even Fortnite referencing the same scene. Oh, and if you look away from the dolls, then look back again, they will have disappeared. So up next is our obligatory Pennywise Back to the Future or Titanic reference that we must include in every video. This week, it's a Pennywise reference from 2018's The Crew 2. In one of the sewers, you can find this. So 
So it's not a red balloon, which makes for a nice change, but we do have an actual clown in a sewer. Something that I did notice was that if you enter photo mode here, it seems to make it look like there are two clowns for some reason. So I recently finished the latest Borderlands 3 DLC and was pretty disappointed with the lack of Easter eggs compared to the main game. Of course, we've covered the Interstellar reference in a previous episode of this series, and this next Easter egg also references a movie. Near the end of the DLC, you can find this. So this robotic hand giving a thumbs up is a reference to this often reference scene from Terminator 2. So The Division 2 recently got a new expansion and a pretty big update which added some more easter eggs for us to find. Up first is something that Ubisoft seemed to be doing more and more recently and that's dropping a Splinter Cell reference in their games. This time it's another appearance from Sans Goggles. In the arcade you can find them in a secret room. Up next is another easter egg we've seen in Ubisoft games before. In the arcade, you can find several arcade cabinets referencing some of Ubisoft's other games, including World of Conflict, The Driver Series, For Honor and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. This next easter egg is one that I didn't expect to see in a Ubisoft game, but I'm really happy it's there. Near the end of the Haunted House section on Coney Island, you can find this. So this typewriter, green plant and knife is a reference to the Resident Evil series, which uses typewriters to save your progress, green herbs to heal and a combat knife to, well, fight off zombies. So if I'm honest, I'm in two minds about this next easter egg. In the animal shelter safe house, which as you'd expect is full of cats and dogs, you can also find these two. So a lot of people have said that this is a reference to Disney's Bambi. Of course Bambi has a best friend who was a rabbit, but as I said I'm not sure about this one so let me know what you think. The final Division 2 easter egg is probably the coolest of them all. If you head to the New York waterfront you can find a sign that says when the water fills the lake, shoot for the morning light. Now this is a reference to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time where you had to shoot the rising sun with your bow. Doing so would give you the fire arrows. So by that logic, let's wait until the sun rises and shoot it to see what happens. So shooting the morning sun in the Division 2 will reward you with 30 incendiary rounds. This is a pretty cool throwback to a legendary game. This next easter egg is probably the strangest in this video. Blood and Bacon is a first person shooter that sees you killing pigs. A whole lot of pigs. As you'd expect from a game that doesn't take itself seriously, there are some pretty cool easter eggs to find. Now I did cover an easter egg from Blood and Bacon a while back, I think it featured in one of my WTF videos, but this one is just as good. If you unlock the cowboy hat, which can be found on top of this building and then equip an AK-47 and a pistol and then wipe your face, the farmer will do this. I see you hiding behind that kissing tire and no, I'm not going back there. You're a rhinestone cowboy, burn -er -er. riding out on a horse in a star-spangled rodeo. You're a rhinestone cowboy, burn -er -er. Getting cards and letters from people I don't even know. The final easter egg in today's video is another strange one. Tacoma is a first person exploration game set aboard a seemingly empty space station in 2088. You play as Amy who must explore the station trying to piece together what exactly happened here. It's a game that I'd recommend playing for yourself just to experience the pretty interesting story. In the medical bay you can find a skull in the storage room. The key for the storage room can be found in the medical office. Take the skull back to where you entered the station and dunk it in the basketball hoop for this to happen. The cat 
So a similar easter egg could be found in another game also developed by Fulbright, Gone Home. In that game you had to find a small basketball and dunk it in the hoop on the back of one of the bedroom doors. Doing so would cause Mitten's journal to play on the TV. Something else I noticed was the fact that the cats appeared to be the same colour as the Infinity Stones from the Marvel comics. So that's it for today's episode. If you're a fan of easter eggs and secrets in games then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you all for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.